Order, please turn off all cell phones or silence them anyway. First order of business today is the swearing in of Phil Cantorino. So I would like to invite up his daughter, Judge Kim Van Haster, to do the swearing in and Annie Rabbit to bring the book for Phil to sign. You got it? Come on right up in front, don't be shy. You need Ken Newbolt to hold anything or not? <laughs> he's, he's chomping at the bit back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ready? You have the Bible and everything? Madeline, do you want to come up? Marilyn, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. The rest of the family want to come up? Sure. Guys, come on. Well, it's a family affair here. Andy's got the book over there. My father, so um, it's a very exciting day for him and our family, and uh, I do believe that Orange County will be uh, proud and privileged to have him serve as he has served his constituents for all these years, and on a county level, uh, we have faith, and you should too, that he will do an absolutely fantastic job. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Swear him in. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Can you raise your right hand, please? Joey Cantorino. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I. Joey Cantorino. Who solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of the 21st District County Legislature. Of the 21st District County Legislature. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Just have to sign the book and then officially take your seat right over next to Mr. Ben. Thank you very much. Congratulations. I guess you'll be part of the Italian American Caucus too. You'll be the most senior guy, but you won't be the highest ranking yet. So. Okay, first, we'll rise for a moment of silence, and we're, we'll keep, pre, uh, excuse me, please keep in our prayers Matt Schleifer, who started with the county on May 3rd, 1948. He worked in the health department and was director of environmental health services for 63 years. And then we'll do the pledge. Stockis, Present. Benton, Here. Berkman, Here. Benelli, Here. Canarino, Here. Cheney, Here. Dillard, Here. DeSalvo, Fagione, Here. Hines, Here. Chemnitz, Kulasek, Fidu, Ruskevich, Here. Sullivan, Here. Turnbull, Here. Vero, Gresham. 21 present. Okay, we have four signed up for public participation. First up is Commissioner Walt Corey regarding the radios. Good afternoon, and I'm here uh, to speak to item 21 on your agenda today. That's the funding uh, for our public safety radio communication solution. Uh, again, just to reiterate, uh, for those of you who may not uh, have served on the Public Safety Emergency Services Always and Means Committee, 
One of the most primary purposes of this radio solution is to be able to permit all members of our 100 plus fire, police, and EMS agencies around the county to be able to communicate with each other on scene of a major emergency when they're all present, fire, police, and EMS, on demand, and when they need to, without having to jump through any hoops. So uh, that's the primary purpose. There's a number of other reasons for it. However, I'm not going to go into that right now. I uh, would like to say that we have met with all of our police chiefs of the county, uh, majority of our fire chiefs, EMS captains, uh, newly elected fire commissioners of many fire districts throughout the county. Um, did a presentation to of each of them. As a matter of fact, um, myself and the county executive and Chairman Himes from Public Safety addressed uh, fire and EMS on this same stage some two weeks ago. Um, many of you were present at that meeting in the audience, um, heard the uh, positive comments and later feedback from all of them regarding the importance of this project. So I'd like to thank uh, Public League County Executive Newhouse as well as Chairman Hines for your strong support uh, and being there for all of our both volunteers and paid members as they serve the residents of our community. Uh, this system will not only allow all of our Orange County agencies uh, to communicate, it provides communication solutions for five of our county departments, uh, ourselves, emergency services with all of our tower sites, the Sheriff's Office, District Attorney, Probation, and DPW. Um, I also want to thank all of the legislators who do serve, who have served on those two committees that I mentioned previously for your uh, full support, unanimous support in this project. Um, just a reminder that um, an affirmative vote today for this funding will mean that we should be able to go live and provide this opportunity to our first responders late in 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Walt. Next up, Graham Steve, former Commissioner of Parks. Good to see you again, Graham. Right in the front row, right? Regarding the sheriff. It's really an honor uh, to speak before this group. It's a little different setting than we were used to in the 1970 building that looks like it's been uh, torn apart. And I'm sure in your wisdom we're doing all the right things. I have a lot of faith in Stephen and uh, many of the members who were here 10 years ago. Uh, I have some clippings from the Times Herald record for the new people uh, that illustrate I'm not a maverick. And I'll put on my glasses and thank you again for letting me be here. I came here today to comment to comment on the injustice of the morning newspaper's criticism of a proposed raise in pay for the Orange County Sheriff. I'm not a trusted friend of the Sheriff. I last saw him on 9-11 Patriots Day memorial service at the county's magnificent Arboretum. The Sheriff led 14 color guards uh, with precision. I'm not a cheerleader, but strongly endorse the proposed compensation. As Parks Commissioner for 38 years, I retired in 2005 with generous accolades from the Times Herald Record. And you could pass these around for the newcomers. I've seen a host of leaders administer the large operation of the Sheriff's Department, but none have come forward as this administration has in 11 years. I can recite perhaps some of the earlier sheriffs from Sherwood to Garvey young Roger, and so on. But Carl has put the Sheriff's Department on a new level 
because of his skills as producing an, an, as producing an honorable office. Look at the number of deputies between the jail and various task forces serving throughout the county. It's SWAT teams and special units are here to help us all. Many of these people have been requested and gladly participate in additional training in Quantico, Virginia, uh, at the Marine base to enhance their skills and actions uh, on the street. There have been, in my estimation, or in reading the paper, no uh, embarrassing actions taken. Sheriff participates in municipal events. Not a single blemish. This leadership should be adequately compensated only to maintain parity, to maintain parity over senior officers and union and union stipend compensation. The sheriff has kept the lid on a force who displays professionalism while protecting us within their jurisdiction, which seems to expose us to a wealth of problems as were seen in Sacramento uh, yesterday. And I'm grateful that we have selected a sheriff for these last 11 years who has done so much to make our county safe and properly run for the benefit of all of our citizens, taxpayers, and businesses. This is my short announcement if you have any questions, call me to <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. The 3406 or what? I know it's close to, yeah, you know, I know the number. Okay, next up is James Stack, and we get, we only have four speakers, so we can go a little bit over the three minutes if you want. Okay, Jim Stack, regarding the budget. Not too much over, though, please. back again. I was here a couple of months ago. This is nice now. Look at this gentleman here. Where we, I don't know. Um, you know, in basic and light, is that your stuff? Oh, um, like the Pope, I don't have the, have the best way to be. Uh, food, clothing, and shelter is basic, basic to any man in the world, any person. It's all good to have this sheriff and all that Marine Corps. Well, who's paying for it? Where's the money? Let me look at it. Hang on. I'll go out and look at the sky. I got a little small farm at 80 acres, 70 something in Maple. Well, anyways, who, where's the money coming from? I'm out here, the bitch and moan cry. I'm sorry. I know it's holiday season, all that good stuff. I asked Mr. Brusher, is there, the past quarter of a century, when did the budget ever go down? And this guy over here, the next town, yep, I don't care if he's Democrat, Republican, hell, he can be a socialist. The executive proposal of this guy, a nice curly white teeth, reminds me of Donald Trump. So a phony, well, whatever. Also proposed tax cut. I mean, the sheriff, that's all nice and good, but I went over there when I first got there. Who was it, Mary McFellis, whoever it was? When you go in there, it's like a country club. My house was built in 1821, 40 years before the Civil War. And this land says 1970, that county building. 1970 is like a joke. I'm, I'm not the first one. Where's all this money coming from? That's all. Go ahead, keep on taxing. Look at these poor people. I know a couple of World War II guys, the real men, Okinawa. 20,000 got killed in one day. Not that I understand the ship. Okinawa, 20, don't believe me. Ask any World War II guys been in Okinawa. 20,000 got killed. Those guys 
made between twenty and twenty nine dollars a month. Don't believe me, look it up. I asked some. Or Korean War vets. How they got pushed to Pusan, you know, Pusan? Don't believe me. Look at all these poor people losing their houses, these taxes. Go ahead, guys like me, we just hog them up. Spend millions of dollars, fine. Oh, oh, oh. Then here, in the local paper, we only have one the record. These school teachers, it's only a high school, over 100,000 a, a year. Mrs. Bonasek, she's a teacher, I think. I don't know. I don't make that, just for the Over 100,000. <laughs> well, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I know you're related to Warren Buffett, like I said. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Warren's from Omaha. Anyways, 24, over 100,000 a year, it's only a high school. This is not Harvard or MIT or Carnegie Mellon. And here, why don't you, the budget, why don't you go down 10%? You got all these excess uh, people in the county, nice people. Yeah, like even Newhouse or Diane, they had an assistant. You need an assistant. In my company, what kind of assistant I got my men? Sites 14 with the sun don't shine. They work six days a week. Seven in the morning, eight o'clock at night. And they go to church Sunday morning. But here, what gets me is that, I, this is unbelievable. Just throw the money away like it's a Mississippi River down Memphis. Just, just, just throw the money away. It's just like it's no tomorrow. You wonder why all these companies, good companies, even IBM, the stock is down $132 a share. It was 212 a year or so ago. It's nice to short it if you knew. Stock. Anyway, IBM from Fisk, they're leaving. I know it's not the But the trend is down south the past 30, 40 years. They probably, now they screw taxes. Well, just keep raising, I'll just keep on buying more. That's, but the, how about the poor guys in World War II? Forget about it, there's not too many guys left. How about the poor guys in Korean War, 80 years old? There's no houses. I go over and visit them. Well, you people, I don't care, you're Republican, Democratic, but you're going to be social. I don't know how you are. And turn around, he just raise the tax, all these county workers. It's a, here, I got so I only had about I only got eight, ten buildings left. A couple hundred acres, and that's it. Turn, how about I go over to go uh, if you want to evict, I go to nice people over there, uh, the ladies, the for uh, civil, they evict the tenant, bad tenant, can't pay the rent because they lose a job. It takes three weeks to four a month that you gotta beg the sheriff, the civil department, to come out, uh, meet them at the door, to evict the people. They don't have the money. They lose a the job. And you want to keep it at it is, why don't you decrease it 10% every year? You know, you got to be like Muhammad Ali in 1965 over Sunny Liston. Mean, mean, and mean. But all, throw all the money away. All the money. How many kind of employees are there? 3,000? Oh, closer to two. Two? Okay, please conclude, Jim. Oh, that's it. You know, uh, okay. why are you so. Pushing the respect of the money, you know, where's the money going to come from? Well, they just, people just look, you know, apparently you people don't read the paper, all the foreclosures. I told you this a couple of months ago, pages after pages after, I mean 700,000, 300,000. I guess you know what, then all these empty buildings, you see the, all these empty buildings, even in Montgomery, all of them, you can, well, okay. Thank you, Jim. Next speaker, former county chairman of the legislature, Mike Bilmar. Regarding radios, I do say that uh, way before he was involved in government, Michael's been a fireman, uh, went through the offices, and, and that's from once he originally comes. <laughs> Smoke signals back. <laughs> For the record, my name is uh, Michael R. Pomeyer from Florida, New York. Good afternoon. Mr. Chairman, Clerk Gene Rampin. Legislative Council, Anthony Reed, party leaders, and legislators. First, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Contarino on your swearing in. I wish you good luck, and I have two suggestions for you. Common sense and compromise. And you'll be a good legislator. Thank you for allowing me to speak to agenda item number 21 on today's agenda. This emergency communications project was started during County Executive Edward Diana's administration and when I served as chairman of the Orange County Legislature. 
Public safety was one of my top priorities for the citizens of Orange County when I was a candidate for the legislature. This resolution provides what I believe to be the final funding for this important project. You have heard from Commissioner Walt Corey, Deputy Commissioner of Emergency Communications, Alan Wiskicki, Deputy Commissioner EMS Coordinator Frank Tasnight, and Deputy Coordinator Fire Coordinator Vinnie Tasconetti, who in my opinion are the experts in this field and who have more than demonstrated the need and value that this new communication system will bring to the County of Orange. So with that being said, I would like to share my thoughts with you on why this equipment should be purchased. I served as a line officer in the Florida Fire Department, working my way up to the chief of the department back in the late 1980s. I know how important communications are at an emergency scene. Now, I don't want to mislead you that back then we used a string and two cans to communicate, but I can remember seeing a lot of hand signals going on at an emergency scene. Each time a fireman, police officer, or EMS person enters an inflamed building, they put their lives on line for public safety. It is critical that these individuals, many of whom are volunteers, have the ability to remain in constant communication with their support teams. In a matter of seconds, things can go very wrong. With this new communication system, where there are multiple speaking agencies at an emergency scene, they will be able to all communicate with each other, fire, EMS, and police, and believe me, when you have a serious emergency scene, you want to be able to communicate. The Florida Fire Department provides protection to the Orange County Social Services Building and Valley View on Quarry Road. I know for a fact that the Florida Fire Department, when responding to an emergency call at these facilities, have had to resort to repeater radios in order to have adequate communication amongst the responders. This new equipment eliminates that issue. We as citizens of Orange County are fortunate to have the first responders that volunteer their time to protect us. Now it's time to give them this tool to have in their toolbox to help us when we need help. We live in a big county with a major international airport, the Air National Guard, three major interstate highways, and a rail system for the northeast corridor of North America used not only for commuters but also for major freight and crude oil hauling along the Hudson River. We live adjacent to Indian Point, and let's not forget the West Point Military Academy. I don't have to tell you about the world we live in today, we see and read about it every day. I see there's perfect attendance today, which means there are 21 legislators here. I hope there will be a perfect vote on this agenda item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Minority Leader Bonasek. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes of September 17th, October 1st, and November 5th, 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Uh, Minority Leader Bonasek again. Thank you again. I move to vote collectively on item numbers 35 through 62, which are the tax resolutions. Second. Okay, if there are no objections, these items will be voted on collectively. Okay, are there any re referrals, consents, or withdrawals? Okay, A, receiving file, B, receiving file, C, receiving file, right? Okay, resolution number one. Legislators Bonasek and Chemnitz, resolution fixing date, time, and place of meeting to organize the county legislature in 2016 pursuant to section 151 of county law. Second. Discussion? Yes. Jeff.
I just wanted to welcome Mr. Cantorino before you have your first vote. Best of luck. That's the easy part. <laughs> and it's always nice to see you, Mr. Pillmeyer, and Mr. Ski as well. Thank you. Roll call. Bonison? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anad Mistakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cantorino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, Padoue, Riskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, resolution number two. Legislators Bonas, second DeSalvo. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature establishing and reporting the standard workday for elected and appointed officials to the New York State and local employees retirement system. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonas, Ekis, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulsek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number three. Legislators Bonasek and Chemnitz, resolution of the Orange County Legislature of Orange County, New York, opposing extension of disastrous trade policies, Trans-Pacific Partnership Free Trade Agreement. Minority Leader Ekus. May I have my name added to it? Yes, you may. Okay. Discussion? Yes. You want to be added to Roseanne? Please. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekus? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? No. Benelli? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Brescia, 19 eyes, two no's. Okay, 4A, receive and file, yes, and number four, local law. Legislators Bonasek and Hines, local law introductory number seven of 2015, the local law amending local law number six of 2014, and fixing the compensation for the Sheriff of Orange County pursuant to Section 201 of the New York State County Law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Oh, sorry. Wait. This is uh, pretty hard for me. Actually, uh, just last, uh, last year, the legislature voted to freeze the pay of elected officials, all elected officials. We unanimously recognized that the county had serious financial problems and decided that we, as legislators, had already accepted a 0% increase for four years and agreed to pay 12% towards our health insurance. Therefore, we're actually taking a pay cut for the next four years. Rightfully so, since most county employees are paying for their health insurance. We all agreed, I think we all agreed, that it was the right thing to do. So what has changed in the last year? Finances get a little better. We think it's okay to change our mind on salary freezes for sitting elected officials. We'll be setting a precedent here that allows all elected officials to ask for salary increases at any time. And that, to me, is unacceptable. What message are we sending to all the county employees about negotiations when they've agreed to a contract that includes two years at zero? The proposal for a $21,000 raise over 13 months is just not acceptable and I will not be supporting it. Legislator Ramo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I think I would think back, and we've all been involved over the last couple of years in the collaborative governing project, and any of those who've read the, the Getting to Yes book tells us to take the person out of the, away from the issue when you're beginning to discuss uh, a topic. And I think this is the right way to go, and we should have heeded it. Unfortunately, I think when this argument began a number of months ago, it became one about the person and not about the position. We talked about the great job, as Mr. Ski said, that, that uh, uh, Sheriff Du Bois has done, and, and we all agree that's true, but it really shouldn't be the reason we're considering the salary increase. Personal performance of an, of an elected official shouldn't, or even a staff member probably shouldn't, weigh that heavily in the salary. Otherwise, we'll be having every department head committing, uh, competing for commissions and what they do and how they save money. However, the idea of looking at the position is really the right way to go. And I wish maybe we had, we had gone that way a little farther. 
But by backing into it, at least with my position, I'm trying to set aside the idea that it's about Sheriff Du Bois, but rather about the position of Sheriff. And in listening to the argument presented by the Human Resources folks and, and the argument by the, the, uh, the Sheriff's Office, we need to do something to raise the Sheriff's salary to make it competitive in, in, in the region. And so for that reason, independent of the argument made before us, I have to believe we need to be thinking about raising that, that salary, and so I'm going to vote for it. And I hope that in 16 we begin to look at other department heads that maybe need to get their salaries raised, not because they're individual performers, but because it's the competitive thing to do. Thank you. Yes, Legislator Hines. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think everybody knows I support this, uh, certainly in committee, and uh, I know the Middletown record quoted me as being on the same, same page as the sheriff, and uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, spot to be in, so I'll take that as a compliment. Um, there's uh, a lot of reasons why we have to support this or should support it. Uh, not only the responsibilities and, and, the, and the position, 400 plus employees, a $65 million budget, reduction in liability insurance costs due to the management, Everybody uh, appreciates the significant border revenue in the tens of millions. I think the last number was about 50 million in total in, uh, since we uh, started taking in those ICE prisoners. And we, we take in more every year, this year even more. Our, our budget reflects, I think, 7 million projected revenue in, in uh, ICE prisoners. That's a, additional responsibilities that were taken on by the Sheriff's Office. We certainly asked him to do it. He uh, went out and got more prisoners and uh, created all this revenue for us. Uh, another important reason is that if this were a graded position as, as one of our commissioners, the salary as, as the max stands now without the 3%, which we all just granted to management level uh, people, would be about 136 plus the 3%. And that would be today. So we're not even there at the 133.9. We may be there, uh, I, don't, I didn't do the 3% times 136, which would be the graded position for someone who was at a commissioner level with 400 plus employees. So it's reasonable, and it makes it uh, on parity with our, our other commissioners. And the sheriff is an elected person, so I think if this wasn't politics, it would pass with flying colors, because all of our other commissioners, uh, nobody objected to that 3%. And I submit to you the 3% was enough either, everybody knew my position on that. Um, we've changed grades before. Uh, we're doing it in this budget with the assistant budget director. That's going to be a great change that will come with additional compensation. We do it all the time. Steve Gross's department comes to us with a desk audit. We look at the position and we say, yeah, this, this, uh, based on these responsibilities, the individual is entitled to more money. I don't uh, look at what we do when we froze legislator salaries as that of the sheriff's position. It's uh, not even apples and oranges. It's blueberries and watermelons. It's just so, so far different. So I, I don't see that as a, as a valid... Uh, valid uh, issue. Uh, the local police chiefs, if you want to look at them, some of them have 10 police officers and a few part-timers and their salaries are about 110. Uh, we saw comparisons of 140, 188 I think was, was one of the high numbers and not even near the number of employees that, uh, that the sheriff's office has. Um, so I think it's justified, it's proper and it's a, it's a correction. Is it a precedent setting, I guess maybe for an elected official, I don't know, I'm only here six years. Uh, but uh, I would have done it earlier, but we didn't have the votes earlier. Uh, we put it off and uh, we didn't fix it properly in my mind uh, last year. This is a chance to, to fix a problem. So I hope everybody supports it. Thank you. Legislator Turnbull. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> uh, like Mr. Paduk, I find this a very difficult vote. and. When there's difficult votes, I tend to focus on the principle. Um, I represent a very conservative district. Um, in fact, when you add the number of Republicans and conservatives together and the number of Democrats, there's about a 1,400 vote difference. So when I campaign, I campaign as a fiscal conservative and I don't reveal I'm a Democrat. Um, well, you know, we made some decisions, and I think we have to abide by those decisions. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I like the sheriff. I think that the sheriff does an outstanding job. Um, 
I would also think that here in Orange County, we tend to be a little bit top heavy. You know, uh, I haven't heard the county executives say that we're, we're out of trouble with the budget. Um, you know, I think we still have to make sure that we watch every penny. And as I've often said, these tax dollars are precious, you know, and uh, we have to think long and hard before we vote for anything that is going to cost those uh, people more money that we represent. Thank you. Legislator Sullivan. I, I just want to um, start off with uh, the fact that I, I really resent the innuendo that the no votes here are uh, because they have some type of a personal uh, uh, problem with the sheriff himself. We're all professionals, and, and I believe that we've all dealt with um, salaries without having to look at the person. We're all looking at the position when we negotiate those salaries. So let me tell you why I'm going to be a no vote today. First of all, his, um, the sheriff's um, salary schedule was negotiated, voted on, and confirmed by an act of the legislature last year. That negotiation took much consideration, a lot of hard work, a lot of time, and was consistent with the financial outlook of the day. We were told by Mr. Newhouse, um, and with much indignation, that our finances were in big trouble, doom and gloom, and nobody got generous raises of all of the contracts which we negotiated last year. And all of those votes and negotiations were based on not a one-year financial outlook, but a multiple-year financial outlook, which we were all very concerned with. Changing our minds now in the middle of this contract not only opens us up to renegotiating other contracts, which have been negotiated already, but it also mocks the entire legislative process. If the county executive or the sheriff felt that this was um, truly something that needed to be done, it also would have been brought up during the budget process, like it should have, but it wasn't. It should have been done in an open forum. Yes, it did go through committees, but it was presented at the last minute and put on the agenda through the committee. Yes, we did discuss it throughout the year, but there was no reason why it should have ended up on anyone else's agenda again. For the same reason why no other contract which we negotiated should have ended up on an agenda again until that term was up. In regards to compensation not being in line with rank, what I've learned here since I've been elected is that we have this issue and it is a very serious problem in all of our county departments. Something which I have inherited, and which most of the new legislators here have inherited, and it definitely needs further study before anyone gets an increase. And all elected officials should be considered as well. So let me just um, be fair here, here and, and remind us that we are stewards of the community and of our taxpayers. And I will make sure that nobody forgets that this was done. It's totally out of process and absolutely out of line. And it is our responsibility to make sure that this doesn't happen. Thank you. Legislator Nagastakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I think, uh, I think you know that the uh, Orange County form of government that we have here today started back in 1968. I'm not sure if you were around back then, but that's when we started the charter and the legislative body. In that, he was. I know. I was 62. I was born. <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, for the next 47 years, the collective wisdom of every single one of the legislative bodies that served this county of Orange had a practice, as far as I can tell, and to the best of my knowledge, of setting the terms of the salaries for all 
24 county elected officials before the start of their next term. Further, they would set the pay for the, four, for the full four-year term. And lastly, I believe they would give each one of those 24 elected officials the same exact percentage increase each year. And that was true for 47 years up until last year when we started to break um, that process. Now, I'm not going to argue the merits of the sheriff's performance. We all know how great a job he does. But I'll argue that if this huge raise is justifiable, if it's a justifiable measure, then do it at the start of the next term and don't start a bad precedent here. I'll ask you to consider the words of LBJ, who said, do not examine legislation in the light of the benefits it conveys, but rather in the light of the wrongs and harms it could cause. And so I thought for a few moments, what kind of harms can a bad president ca cause in this situation? If we break the four-year pay contract that we put in place, what will be the effect on the morale of the county workforce who were given small raises because we were supposedly in financial hardship? Will they want their contracts renegotiated? What happens when another elected county official wants to break the four-year pay schedule in place for them so they can get a raise? Will you say no to them? Will that be the basis for a, discrimin a discrimination lawsuit? Will you say no because their job performance is not as good? Will the legislature then be the arbiter of elected officials' jobs performance? If so, will some elected officials receive bigger raises than others because of job performance? Will some legislators receive bigger raises because of job performance? Or maybe some will receive bigger raises because they're in the right party. Or maybe because they place the right vote on key issues. What happens when any elected official, including the case we're dealing with here today, comes back again next year and asks for more money? With the new precedent we're putting in place, it will be their right to do so. In general, what happens when each and every elected official comes here over and over during each and every one of their terms, years of term of office, asking for an increase, coming over and over until finally they have the friendly votes to get their request implemented. So I'll end with this. This morning I got a call from a reporter who stated and asked, basically told me there's much talk out there about this being the last term for the sheriff in office. And could I comment about that and about this salary increase? I told them they should call the sheriff and ask the sheriff. I guarantee that if this raise were not being done right now, but were instead being done at the start of the next term, those questions would not be asked. Mr. Chairman, my integrity means more to me than just about anything else. And I will not put myself in a position where someone can say that I padded the salary of a friend before their retirement. Thank you. Yes, Legislator Manelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I've heard some of my colleagues here say that this is a difficult vote. Well, quite frankly, every vote we take is a difficult vote if we're doing our homework. And I believe that most people up here really do, the, do their homework. And in doing my homework, I reflected on the minutes from last meeting when we discussed this last year. Last year was a very difficult year for us budget-wise. We really dug our heels in, and throughout 2015, we made some dramatic, and even towards the end of 14, we made some dramatic changes. And those changes have proved to be very beneficial to us as well as the taxpayers of Orange County. Throughout those minutes last time, not one, not two, but more than that, legislators mentioned that this is something that can be revisited when the time is correct, in 16, or in 17, or even 15. 
reflect on those minutes. And that's what we're doing today, plain and simple. This wasn't something that was invented. It had had a lot of discussions. It was something as any I, an issue can come before any statutory committee through the proper channels. It came through the proper channels. It was vetted. If you look at what other counties do when they, when they do this type of study, we did that. We looked at surrounding counties. We looked at department heads. We looked at um, underlings in the department. We looked at the size of the department. We looked at the scope of the work. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the position of sheriff. In all due respect to Carl Du Bois, who happens to be a wonderful sheriff and probably one of the best in New York State, this isn't about him. This is about the position. And to not bring that position in accord to where it should be is doing everybody a disservice. So we're not lining the pockets of the sheriff. We're preparing for the position. And as Mr. Amos said earlier on in this discussion, that's what we have to focus on. We have to focus on the position. And if you look at that and you compare it to people in the other positions throughout the state and in and other department heads here in Orange County, it is just not on par. And the longer you wait to do that, the more dramatic change you're gonna have to make when you eventually do this. One of the problems with this is that it's an elected position. And there's always a political atmosphere that goes with this, and oh, we're gonna be sacrificial lambs and we're not gonna give anybody raises. Well, eventually you get behind the eight ball and you have to do something, and then you see all these spikes in your budget, which is really not the right way to be able to do a budget. So this is something that came before us as chairman of rules, I allowed it to be on the agenda for full discussion. It was voted on it was voted on appropriately to come before this full legislature and that's what brings it here today. And I am prepared to support this because I feel that all of the homework has been done and has been prepared over the period of time. We have thoroughly discussed this. Thank you. Georgia Leader Bonasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I agree with those legislators who say we have to visit um, maybe our county department heads, salaries, elected officials possibly. Whether it changes or not, I think it definitely has to be looked at. But before us today is compensation for the sheriff. And the facts that came before us in committee were pertaining to the office of the sheriff and the sheriff's salary. So that's what I'm here ready to vote on today. And I want to tell you, I do agree with Legislator Hines. Um, I was one of the legislators who was ready to support an increase when we talked about this a year or so ago. Um, unfortunately, at that time, you know, we didn't have the votes. But Katie's absolutely right. At that time, we said we could come back and revisit it. And that's exactly what we're doing. Anybody, any legislator can put whatever spin on any issue. We know. We know we can do that. Um, as far as integrity, I want to say something right now. And, and I had a, con a constituent call me about this and say, well, I heard the sheriff wants to do this because he's going to retire after this term. And my response was, I'm telling you right now, and I'm going to say it publicly, never has the sheriff said to me behind closed doors or publicly that he was retiring. So for me, I'm not compromising my integrity by my yes vote because if I did have that knowledge, I'd be having a different conversation. That has never been said to me. So I can't base my vote on something that's hearsay. So I just want to say that. Um, why am I yes vote? Uh, we're talking about compensation. And probably the most compelling argument um, Mr. Gross brought before us in the undersheriff was some of the charts that were given to us. Our sheriff oversees 425 employees. He oversees a portion of the county budget in the amount of about $65 million. That, and looking at the charts that were given to us, comparable to department heads and other employees in this county who oversee less employees, fewer employees, and uh, a smaller portion of the budget make more than our sheriff makes. So that was one of the compelling arguments. The second was what was brought out in committee, I believe it was two captains, um, who are five ranks below the sheriff, who make more than the sheriff makes. And I, I don't, I, I, I go to, to Kevin's argument. It, it, to me, it's about making an adjustment to bring that position to where it should be. 
So I just wanted to state that, and I, I, you know, I hope that none of us ever sit up here and base our votes on hearsay, because that would be a very sad situation, because we hear a lot of stuff that's not true in this business. And I, I personally don't appreciate being implied that if we're a yes vote, that we're, we're compromising our integrity. Thank you. I too, um, my integrity means everything to me, but I don't worry about every pie in the sky, uh, or sky is falling rather, scenario um, by setting a precedent. Occasionally we do set precedents, and this is an anomaly that I think needs addressing. It's a precedent that I don't think is going to, you know, open up the floodgates. When we look at it, we talk about the position which Michael, Melissa, Kevin tried to do. The sheriff is the number one law enforcement official in the county of Orange. There are many chiefs of police that are making more than him around the county. Or, yeah, there are many that make more than him. And in other counties. I mean, we can compare how we want with other counties, but, you know, there's, I don't think there's a county in the state of New York besides Orange that has five accreditations, three on the jail side and two on the civil side. I mean, he's the number one law enforcement official in the county of Orange. Oversees 425 employees. That's 20% of county workforce. 20% of the county workforce. I mean, you know, I've read the articles, the editorials in Times Road Record over the last couple of weeks, and, and they just floored me. I mean, I, I try to put them out of my mind, and most of them are in the rearview mirror now. But, uh, you know, they say at uh, PNC that, you know, it was a 4 to 4 vote with my vote. And by the way, if Phil were here, it would have been a 5 to 4 vote. If Shannon were here, she indicated it, she would have voted for it. Um, but that is no more of a committee than the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee oversees all local laws, so it's no less important to vote on this issue than, than uh, PNC, and that was an argument. But, I mean, they also argued that, uh, you know, that my, uh, my vote, they counted me in PNC and they didn't count me in uh, rules. For the record, in the time chart record in this case, the chairman or chairwoman, and Michael R. Pillmeyer will attest to this, can vote on any matter in a committee. Don't count toward a quorum, but they can vote on a committee at any committee meeting. And, and not just in the case of a tie. So we addressed that straight. I, I don't know where the editorial session was going anymore. I mean, they praised a the mayor who's proposing a 14% raise, like, that's okay. You know, pierce the cap. Pierce the cap every year. That's okay. I understand it. And then they also say that we got our, our ducks in a row. The Republicans have, you know, set down the rules for this uh, salary adjustment. It's, by the way, it's not a partisan issue. There's probably going to be four Republicans here today that vote against this and four Democrats that vote for it. Not a partisan issue. So let them know that, Chris, please. Okay? We didn't have any ducks in a row, but we think it's the right thing to do. I think this should have been dressed years ago. I don't know why it was, wasn't quite frankly. I mean, if we talk about the position, that position be, should be paying probably more than what we're about to adopt today, here today. It really should, the position. The fact that the job that the sheriff has done, such a superb job, makes it more compelling. I mean, we've added, just in the next year, we're going to add another million to the ICE inmate money. We're going to go from a projected $5.8 million to $6.8 million. The five accreditations, they cost us money in woman hours and man hours. They cost us money. They don't come for free. But we're going to save a million dollars plus on the insurance side. A million dollars insurance. Plus the fact that some of the rank and file are making more than the sheriff. Not including the overtime. From the beginning of the year, right, Kenny? From the beginning of the year, they're making more money. And that shouldn't be. And that was the case with some majors in the state troopers. But they finally addressed that, so that's not going to happen anymore. Or it will be very rare that it happens. So let's focus on the position, and if we, if we go back and we bring in personalities, let's look at the job performance. You know, I would like to see those reports back at Public Safety. I've told the sheriff that, and I think they'll, they'll bring them back. But those reports are more thorough than any reports that we get. They really are have been for years, and they just get more meticulous and more meticulous, and they stop bringing them the last few meetings. I'd like to see them back, and I think we will see them back at public safety. But the, let's vote for this on the, on the, that it, it warrants it for that position, first and foremost. I do have a few salaries here for, of commissioners, and I won't name the offices, but let's go right down the top, 131,000, 159,000, no, excuse me, that's, can't use that one. 134,000, 137,000, 147, 147, 147, 129, 123, 123, and, and I lost the rest of them. 
but you can see where some of the other salaries are. And I'm not saying that those commissioners and department heads don't deserve those salaries, because I think they do. But it just makes it even more compelling to show how out of whack the salary for the office, not the department, the office of the sheriff is. I encourage all of you to vote for this today. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? No. Berkman? No. Vanelli? Yes. Panarino? Yes. Cheney? No. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Baggione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Hemnant? Yes. Kulisek? Yes. Paduk? No. Ruskevich? No. Sullivan? No. Turnbull? No. Bureau? Yes. Gresham? Yes. 13 ayes, 8 noes. Number 5. I was remiss at the beginning of the meeting for not addressing the tragedy and asking for a moment of silence that affected the Orange County Clerk's Office, which is a, was a terrible tra tragedy, excuse me. And uh, I would like to recognize the County Clerk, Annie Rabbit, Kelly SQ, and Marie. Um, is Annie still here? Do you want to say a few words about the, uh, I know it's a tough situation. Um, and I, I sincerely apologize for missing that at the beginning of the meeting. Um, our thoughts and prayers are with everyone in your office and her family. Thank you. And thank you for uh, giving a moment of silence for someone who served the county, who was a mother, a grandmother, and certainly somebody who will be missed. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever prepared for such a tragedy, but uh, please have your prayers for her family, her two sons, her parents live in Goshen, and certainly her co-workers who truly loved her. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, and this morning I would like to acknowledge that the DA had a, a magnificent program here with a lot of members of law enforcement um, regarding, you know, sexual assault. And we're the first county in the, what's the program called, Tom? It's on us. And so we're the first county in the United States to adopt this program. And I thank Dave and his uh, ADAs and his staff and, and all the people involved. Christine Young was here, Tom was here, and myself. Who else was here? Oh, Jim Kulisek was, or Jim Kulisek, excuse me, was here this morning as well. And a uh, magnificent program. Jeff, you want to say something? Thank you, Mr. Pure Chairman. Uh, you mentioned earlier Matt Schleifer, and uh, I don't know if you were aware that he actually passed away and I went to his funeral this, this afternoon. And uh, he was with the county for, I think, 65 years? 63? I guess that's uh, easy to make a mistake when it's that long. Some, someone suggested that maybe he's been in local government more than any else, anyone else in the state could be. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, say I, I'll miss him. He was a personal friend of my family. He took care of my father, my father's burial, and uh, among many other fine attributes and we were talking earlier about integrity there's no person that i've ever met i think in my life certainly uh, in county government that exemplified integrity is match life thank you jeff i think you went to your temple too yeah. and it's probably the longest tenured county employee even probably longer than shirley hadn't even right longest ever yeah it was, it was quite an individual everybody that had a health uh, you know public health issue had to deal with that probably. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, number five. Legislators Berkman, Bonasek, Paduke, resolution of the Orange County Legislature calling upon the New York State Legislature to reconsider sparkling device legislation and amend penal law sections 270 and 405 to allow New York State small cities the ability to opt by local law to exempt sparkling devices from definition of fireworks. Second. Discussion? 
Benton? Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nekastakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cantorino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? No. Bagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Russia. 20 ayes, 1 no. Okay, number six. Legislators Benton and Benelli. Resolution amending and reaffirming the Orange County Department of General Services procurement policy. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Panarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Bagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Russia? 21 eyes. And number seven? Legislators in Agnostakis, Benton, and Kulasek. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a gift on behalf of Orange County of 20.02 acres of vacant land in the town of Newburgh, pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Thank you. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Agnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Number eight. Legislators Benton and Hines. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a gift on behalf of the county of Orange of 50 acres of vacant land in the town of Warwick, pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Anasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulsek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. For nine. Legislators Benton and Hines. Resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said land from a tax sale to Orange County, pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Second. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 10. Legislator Benelli, resolution approving the applications for the correction of certain errors appearing on the 2015 tax rolls for certain towns and districts and ordering the correction of said errors pursuant to section 556 of the real property tax law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Ekis, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulsek, Paduka, Skepich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Brescia. 21 eyes. Number 11. Legislators Benton and Kulsek. Resolution providing for the levy of a charge to the 2016 county town tax bills for a particular parcel in town of Goshen. Second. Yes. We were talking about this in caucus. I'm actually uh, unclear about this resolution, and I'm hoping somebody could straighten, straighten me out on this. Uh, it's my understanding that this refers to if a private owner has a contract, let's say, for solar panels on their roof, and that they're paying over a period of time, and that there's a default in the property, that the county will assume the expense of Paying for the for the improvement of the solar panels is that, and then we could try to get the money back later. Well, we have the commissioner of finance, so she'll come down, I, I believe, and explain it. So um, a levy to the tax bill is treated just like. Um, when we do the regular tax uh, foreclosure process. So if that is in default, we can foreclose on the property and handle it the same way we do with any other uh, tax bill that's not paid. You make hole on it, yes, DEIC.
Well, first of all, you already approved the um, EIC as a separate entity, as a taxing entity. So really this is a, a formality of passing the levy on the specific parcel, but you've already approved the fact that it will go on to the, the tax bill. Um, I, I have to, you know, it's my first one. I don't, I wasn't here for the, <laughs> I wasn't here for the history of the creation of the um, special, it's not really a special district, but it is a, I mean, maybe Antoinette can help me out with that. But um, there is, at the state level, there is a fund that's created for these defaults. And there, it, we can apply for that fund to make us whole in that situation. So we are going to meet with the EIC directly and go over all those details. We just haven't had, you know, the time to work that into our schedule yet. But we'll meet with them and we'll talk to them about those ramifications and those um, things that we can do to make whole in that, that amount. Okay, hopefully there'll be a lot more, right, Chris? Or... All right, roll call. Honestly? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Aiton? Yep. Ned Mustakis? No. Bet Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Uh, Kennerino, sorry. Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Padu? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera? Gresham? 20 ayes, one no. And resolution number 12. Legislators Benton and Berkman. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature assuming lead agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the sale by the county of 54 Grand Street, the YMCA building, City of Newburgh, New York, classifying the action as type one and determining that the action will not have result in any significant adverse environmental impacts. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Berkman. And we all know my thoughts about Secra, and uh, I will support it, but I'd prefer if you took my name off as the prime sponsor. So granted. You still want to be on as a secondary sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> the next one where you actually okay. get the cash, I want my name on that one. <laughs> okay. Roll call. Sorry, Jeff. Anasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagdostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes, 1 abstention. Okay. And number 13. And that, does that require two thirds or no? Yes. 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 Okay. It's not a bonding, but it's bail of property. Yeah. We know this now. No. <laughs> Unless we have to teach him again. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're okay this time, though. No. Okay. Legislators Dillard, Benton, Cheney, Berkman, Ekes. Local law introductory number eight of 2015. Local law relating to the sale of certain county, county real property known as the Central Orange Development Area, formerly known as YMCA Building, authorizing consideration of offers other than in response to advertisement and authorizing the sale to other than highest responsible bidder. Second. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Gresham. 20 ayes, 1 abstention. Just a quick shout out to John McCary. Job well done again. And number 14. Legislators Kulisek and Ruskevich. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature giving notice of intent to assume late agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker with respect to the intersection improvements of County Road Number 1, County Road Number 1A, County Road Number 41, and Blooms Corners Road, making a preliminary determination that this project be classified as an unlisted action. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagdostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney, Diller? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero Brescia, 21 eyes. Phil, do you want to be a sponsor on this? Well, I would think you do. Okay, add Phil, please. Okay, number 15. Legislators Paduk and Turnbull. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature assuming lead agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker 
with respect to the 10 mile extension of the Heritage Trail, classifying the action as a type one action and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impact. Second. Discussion? Yes. Legislator Burke. For reasons that I'm sure I can explain at a different day, or a different time of the day, I'd like to be added as a sponsor. Why, well, well, certainly. Location. location. <laughs> okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amal? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines, Kemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Gresham, 21 eyes. And next Thursday is the IDA Governance Committee meeting, and I'm inviting you publicly, even though you already invited yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes, certainly. Okay, number 16. Bond resolution, two thirds. Legislators Benton, Turnbull, Benelli. Bond resolution dated December 3rd, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing water system upgrades at Thomas Bull Memorial Park, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 465,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 465,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Yes, Barry. Yes. Um, as chairman of the Physical Services Committee, I just wanted to uh, make sure that all my colleagues um, had a good understanding of, of what this project means to the county. Uh, the Thomas Bowl water system is an important component of the park. It provides potable water to the Gramsci Recreation Center, which is the lodge, along with the bathrooms for snow tubing and pavilions in the picnic grove. We have responsibilities to provide reliable potable water to the people who use the park and also contractually to the concessionaire who operates uh, in the lodge. Reliability of the current system, which was originally installed over 45 years ago, is questionable. For the most part, the equipment is worn out. It is long overdue for replacement. The engineering report also shows the components of the current system are located below ground and subject to flooding, system failure, and very difficult working conditions in a confined space for our employees. Since this previously came before this legislature, the Parks Department has reduced the cost by $60,000 by enlisting the Department of Public Works to perform much of the design and prepare plans and specs. If the upgrades were not provided, the county will continue to replace failing components as necessary, and employees will continue to be subjected to difficult working conditions, and loss of service is likely to occur. In the end, this project provides a system that is new, upgraded, reliable, safer for our employees, and not subject to flooding. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Legislator Bank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to echo what the Chair of Fiscal has said, and it would be my consideration that uh, any time there'd be a, at least slightest chance of any uh, contamination where uh, the public would be uh, sickened, uh, you definitely need to take action prior to that and not make sure that that could never possibly happen. Okay, thank you. Roll call? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? No. Fagione? Hines? No. Hemnitz? Kulisek? Padu? Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Russia. 18 ayes, 3 noes. Okay, number 17, another bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Benton, Hines, Ruskevich. Bond resolution dated December 3rd, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing additional financing for the replacement of the Ford Bridge located in the town of Minnesing, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 760000 appropriating 400000 therefore, in addition to the 360000 previously appropriated, and authorizing the issuance of 400000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Anasek? Yes. Ikes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, 
Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Gresham, 21 ayes. Okay, number 18, another bond resolution requiring two thirds. Legislators Ruskevich, Turnbull, Benton, Benelli. Bond resolution dated December 3rd, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing bridge improvements located throughout the county, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 500,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 500,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Agnes Dacus? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Baggione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 19. Legislators Kulisek, Paduk, Benton, DeSalvo. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Commissioner of Public Works to contract with certain towns and villages for snow and ice control on certain county roads pursuant to Section 135A of the Highway Law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Anasa? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Baggione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 20. Legislators Kulisek, Paduk, Benton, Turnbull. Resolution by the County of Orange in support of the Orange County Soil and Water Conservation District's grant application to the New York State Soil and Water Conservation Committee for an award of funds for flood mitigation on the Wolf Hill River, Black Dirt Agricultural Region. Discussion? Yes. You want to be added? Chris, too? Barry and Paul? Absolutely. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Bureau? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 21, excuse me, uh, two thirds on resolution. Legislators Ekis, Fagione, Benton, Hines. Amending bond resolution dated December 3rd, 2015. Further amending the bond resolution adopted August 1st, 2013 and amended October 2nd, 2014 in relation to financing the cost of acquisition, installation, and construction of a new emergency communication system for the Department of Emergency Services and Communications at a total estimated cost of $25,185,030. Second. Discussion? Yes. Minority Leader Ekes. Um, Certainly, I am going to back this wholeheartedly. I want to thank everybody, especially uh, Mr. Corey, for all the work he put into this and his entire department. And I just want to take the opportunity to thank all the volunteers out there in Orange County uh, for everything they do for us. Uh, it, it's just we couldn't survive without them. Yes, Legislator Vanell. You want to be added? Yes. Mike Paduk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I wholeheartedly support this as well. I know the volunteers do a fine job, like Chris is saying. However, in committee, I did bring up one uh, concern that I had. It really makes it hard to vote yes for this, although I'll tell you that I'm going to. But I did want to mention that, you know, during the discussions of this radio system and all the money that's being spent, um, it happens to be where there's two for-profit agencies getting these radios as well um, at taxpayers' expense. I had a concern about it. Uh, we discussed it in committee. I asked about um, the possibility of them paying their, what we get the radios for, which would have been a break anyway. Um, I haven't heard, I heard today though, that they, they're getting their radios, their 70 radios and two bases for half cost. Um, that makes it really hard for me. I, like I said, I'm gonna be supporting it because it benefits so many others. But the fact that the county is, is spending taxpayers' money to give radios to a not-for-profit I mean, I'm sorry, for-profit, uh, ambulance, uh, Mobile Life and MSTAR, you know, it's just, I think it's, it's just a bad thing to do. Uh, you know, rightfully so, we could give it to them at the cost we get them for, but to give them a reduced cost and let them charge taxpayers for the services they provide, I just have a problem with it. So I just wanted to make that heard. Before you leave the bonus, if you want to say something? You want to be added? Okay. Jim Kulisek added, John Biro added, uh, Myrna. And a fellow in the back there, what's his name? DeSalvo. <laughs> Who else? Anybody else? Barry. Does everybody want to be added? Everybody? Who doesn't want to be added? 
Hey, you do. Okay. Don't speak for me. <laughs> I told you I'm supporting it. Okay. I had a concern with it, and I expressed it. You want to be out of here? Support yourself. Talk about yourself. Yes, sir. You're wrong. Okay. Yes, Jeff. Uh, I think Mike Paduk brought up a very interesting point. We talked about it in committee. There are several legislators that are more knowledgeable than I about this candidly. Uh, they have multiple volunteer districts, fire districts, and, uh, and other districts, uh, as well as their local police stations. So uh, this is a major step for Orange County, and, uh, and I have confidence in Commissioner Walcori and his staff, and I want to make sure that Orange County is in the cutting edge of, of this kind of communi communication devices. And just watching TV about what's going on in California, it shows, it kind of proves the point how uh, close coordination and communication is, is of paramount importance. But in addition to the issue about whether the for-profit ambulance companies should be uh, paying it at cost, which I think is an interesting point, rather than a 50% reduction, which is a, somewhat arbitrary, however, better than free. But there's a couple other issues that I'm concerned about as well. Uh, there's an opportunity, perhaps there was an opportunity, maybe there still remains one, uh, to have some of these districts either share services, consolidate, merge. Now, I understand it's very, uh, Potentially, well, put it this way, I feel a little bit bold even suggesting it because I know a lot of people have their identities wrapped up into these very important local companies. But here we are providing new communication devices at the cost of the county, and I'm concerned that we're going to ignore uh, uh, also a, a concurrent interest of, of having uh, healthy departments of of substantial size and sustenance. So that's, uh, unfortunately, I'm at the mercy of others that are more familiar with these topics, but I'm at least wanted to put that on the table. And then lastly, uh, I'm also concerned with the amount of money that we're spending, which is, a, you know, a lot of money. I want to make sure that we have the best bang for the buck, and that would be uh, best helped by having competitive bids. And it's my understanding that we started out with two, one dropped, and there's one left standing. And uh, I'll write a letter to Mr. Corey, just kind of outlining the concerns which I've just stated and which I've also said before in committee. I think uh, perhaps with you at the helm, some of these issues can be addressed. I just let lines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd first like to thank my fellow firefighter, Mr. Pellmeyer, for coming and speaking on the issue. Uh, I agree with everything you said as well. Um, I think this is the biggest and most significant uh, commitment to public safety that we've had in this county since we opened the 911 uh, building that we're sitting in right now. Um, there's nothing that uh, can protect emergency responders better than accurate information and uh, quality communication at all times. You'll notice today you got an email from the uh, well, uh, Vinny Tankasali uh, that explained the Mayday system. But you can't have a Mayday system without communication, so that's right in line with uh, firefighter safety. When it comes to the point of consolidation, you'll see that uh, you won't find better uh, communication and cooperation in the fire service and ambulance service. It's called mutual aid. We uh, don't need uh, full staffing in every town at all times because we call upon each other on a regular basis. Um, and that's it required because uh, we are almost exclusively volunteer except for a few of the cities and uh, federal uh, positions. When the uh, costs of this first came about, uh, I was with the county executive and Commissioner Corey and his staff and we talked about not paying for West Point to be in this system, that the feds would, this is a federal basically mandate that's unfunded. Uh, so we shouldn't be paying for that, and that was an agreement. The New York Air National Guard, we're not paying for that. It's a state agency. Uh, so we, we did look at that, and we did say that we should talk about the uh, private, uh, the, I'm sorry, the private ambulance uh, providers. There's, uh, on the plan right now, in Mobile Life would get 50 radios in their ambulances, and uh, MSTAR would get 20 in their ambulances, plus a base station in each uh, facility. 
Uh, the reason I support paying some of that cost, and I, I agree with Mr. Paducah and, and the 50%, I, I don't know whether you agree with the 50%, but I agree with the 50% because we're forcing it on them. These are businesses that are operating right now, uh, taking care of people, uh, uh, ALS providers, by the way, people that are most in need. And we're saying to a private entity, if you want to keep uh, providing this service to Orange County, you have to have these radios. So I, I think we owe it to them because they, they may, have, may have known this was coming, but uh, not necessarily had the money to pay for it. There's an argument in the professional ambulance service that they don't make money by responding to the calls, they make their money in transport. So I'm not here to debate that because it's not in any way my area of expertise. I just want to point out that we did get $6 million in grants towards this project. We're adding uh, towers to this microwave solution, which is going to make the county safer. There won't be any uh, areas where we don't have any communication anymore. There, there are some areas throughout the county where you don't get good communication now. And, and that can be dangerous, uh, not only to the victims, but to the responders. Uh, the point about competitive bids, we actually did bid this. Don't, don't think that we didn't bid this out. Two people picked up the specs and met with uh, Commissioner Corey and his staff. And uh, I can tell you that the deal we got is phenomenal from Motorola. I think the other vendor dropped out because they knew they couldn't compete uh, with Motorola. So we're happy to have Motorola. They're, they're one of the best providers of communication devices in emergency services right now. So I think it's great that Motorola got the contract. And if you look at the data that was given out, you'll see that uh, other counties that have already converted to these systems have paid significantly more for these individual radios. So uh, with, uh, Walt and his staff did a phenomenal job in bringing this together. And we still, uh, you, you'll remember, I don't know if, I think it was said in committee that one of, th this vendor made a mistake in the warranty and they're sticking to it. So uh, we're gonna get uh, warranties on the portable radios for I think $60 for three more years, which is phenomenal for a radio that costs in excess of $2,500. So they stood by that. Uh, the uh, emergency service providers, if they want to buy more, they can do so at our pricing, which I think is also a, a great deal for them. Uh, the feedback that we got was positive from every branch of emergency services. Uh, I saw emails going back and forth, and I was at the presentation, uh, and everybody was happy about this. There's a big key in uh, the federal government wants interoperable communication. Uh, think about a hostage situation where an ambulance is coming in and the police don't want the ambulance there yet because the scene isn't safe. We don't have those issues anymore. I can give you a hundred examples of situations like that where you have to have the cross communication and so that way the ambulance wouldn't come into the scene until the police tell them it's secure, things of that nature. So this is a, a great move for Orange County. I know it's a lot of money and we're going to continue to try to get more grants. Uh, we're also going to have the individual fire departments apply for grant money to help with this as well. So I hope everybody supports it. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And what Kevin was alluding to, that we didn't buy the system off the state bid, which Jim Burpo preaches from time to time, that we don't have to go off state bid. And how many millions of dollars did we save by not going off a state bid? Over $12 million by not using the state bid, which sometimes we acquiesce automatically to. We don't anymore, thankfully. But I would like to thank uh, Benny Tankaselli, Alan, Frank, and especially Walt Corey, Commissioner. Um, what's that? Will you? Uh, Wayne Booth, too, was involved with this heavily. Um, fantastic job. I, I know Bob Reynolds, former chief of Montgomery, was on the committee, and uh, praise him, too. You know, some of those dead areas, like um, Sparrow Bush and Highland Falls and Montgomery between Bullville and Montgomery, uh, you know, Crawford area, uh, you know, we're going to have much better enhanced communication now. And I'd le especially like to thank our very own go-to person, Kevin Hines, um, you know, go-to person as far as emergency response and public safety uh, for helping shepherd this, this through as well. And he spoke eloquently at the meeting of all the emergency responders in this very room uh, with the county exec. And uh, I thank him and I encourage everyone. We, you know, this goes way back the whole time I've been in the legislature, 22 years. We never really have partisan issues when it comes to public safety. We're, we're almost 100% unified all the time. So I encourage everyone to vote for this. What's that? Did I thank uh, thank you, Chairman Pullmeyer, too? Former chairman, but it feels like you're chairman sometimes. He <laughs> 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 comes in. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnes Dacus? Yes. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Keminence? Kulasek? 
Padu, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Gresham, 21 eyes. Okay, number 22. Legislators DeSalvo and Padu. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept hazmat equipment on behalf of the Orange County Department of Emergency Services, Fire Services Division, pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikis? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Padu, Prescovich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 23. 23? Yes. I'm sorry, 23. Legislators Hines, Bonasek, DeSalvo, Ikis, Fagione, Padu, Vero. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services to accept grant funds from New State of New York Governor's Traffic Safety Committee pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Chris? Uh, please put all Democratic legislators on this as sponsors. Apoli? Anybody else? Okay. Larry and Paul? Katie? All Republicans want to be on the Yes. All the independents too. <laughs> Okay. All right. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagastakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulsek, Padu, Prescovich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Gresham. 21 eyes. Okay. Number 24. Legislators Ikis and Fagione. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a donated 2016 Ford Explorer on behalf of the Orange County Sheriff's Office pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Discussion? M. DeSalvo added. Okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Diller? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Padu? Prescovich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Bureau? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 25 of two thirds majority required bond resolution. Legislators Bonasek, Ikis, Benton, and Agnostakis. Bond resolution dated December 3rd, 2015. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing additional financing for acquisition of equipment for the Valley View Center or sewer plant, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 130,040, appropriated 64,500, therefore, in addition to the 65,540 previously appropriated, and authorizing the issuance of 64,500 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Question. Yes, Mer. Yes, I can. We can. Roll call. Vanessa? Yes. Ikis? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Padu? Prescovich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Bureau? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 26. Legislators Berkman, Ikis. Resolution authorizing Orange County Community College to use $100,000 in capital chargeback money for the purchase of capital equipment. Second. Discussion? Tom, Tom wants to be added. Okay. Uh, Katie, you want to speak or you want to? Both. Oh, okay. Katie, yeah. <laughs> yes, I would like to be added, and I'd also like to thank Chair of the Board of Trustees, Helen Ulrich, who happens to have joined us this afternoon. Thank you very much, and I want to thank you for the quick response to some of our questions here that clarified this issue for us so that we can make an educated decision. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Curly wants to be added as well. Okay. Michael? All want to be added? Anybody not want to be added? Okay, everybody will be added. Roll call. Anasek, yes. Ikis, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Padu, Prescovich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 27. Legislators Cheney, Dillard, Benton, DeSalvo. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reallocate chief budget analyst at the Orange County Division of Budget pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Padu? Ruskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 28. 
Legislators Benton, Fagione, and Agnostakis. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedule is to create assessor at the Orange County Department of Finance, Division of Real Property Tax Service Agency, pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Right. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Braskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 830 received file. You can communicate. I'm sorry. 29. Sorry, I missed it. Okay. Legislators Fagione, Benton, and Kulasek. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create two assistant assessors part-time positions at the Orange County Department of Finance, Division of Real Property Tax Service Agency, pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Great discussion. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikes? Yes. Amo? Yep. Anagnostakis? Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 30 is that the county exec returned the budget without change for 2016, and number 30. Legislator Benton, resolution finally adopting the proposed budget of Orange County for the year 2016, pursuant to section 360 of the county law and section 4.07 of the Orange County Charter and Administrative Code. Second. Discussion? Yes, Minority Leader Ekes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, here we are, about to approve the budget. You know, it's funny, we've been here for, what, about an hour and a half already? And it's interesting, some of the discussions about money that we've had to this point and how perhaps some salary raises were too much and maybe some money spent on uh, water systems is too much and all. And yet I propose saving a quarter of a million dollars in this budget without doing any damage at all to services and, as a matter of fact, even improving services in the, in the clerk's office. And you know, unfortunately, with the tragedy in the clerk's office, there's even a greater need for that now. There is no way I can support this budget. There is waste in it. You know, I studied this budget line by line. And trust me, if you're concerned about taxpayers and their money, here is the place to do it. Vote no on this budget. Any further discussion? Lee? Oh, let it go. Roll call. Oh. Yes, Joe. One quick comment. I just want to uh, say thank you to the uh, administration for keeping in the $50,000 for assisting uh, homeless for the county. I, I appreciate it. Okay. Roll call. Oh. Legislator Nagastakis? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, understand the minority leader's concerns. Um, but just as a little bit of point of information, uh, as legislators, we sit here, and if we vote no to this budget, we actually then revert back to the original budget of the executive, which is even worse than the situation that we have here today. We'd be doing even worse for the taxpayers if that's our concern. So just so everybody understood. Plus, we'd be cutting 9000 out for the libraries, that's right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> wouldn't want to do that. Just I couldn't resist it. <laughs> oh, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ikes? No. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Yes. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Canarino? Yes. Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Sullivan? No. Turnbull? No. Bureau? Yes. Brescia? Yes. 18 eyes, 3 noes. Okay, number 31. Legislator Benton, resolution making appropriations for the conduct of the government of Orange County, Orange County Social Services District, Orange County Sewer District Number 1, the Orange County Small Watershed Protection District Number 1 for Crown Line Creek and the Beaver Dam Lake District for the fiscal year 2016, pursuant to sections 356 and 360 of the county law and sections 4.04A and 4.05B of the Orange County Administrative Code. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, yes. Ikes, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Kadu, Ruskevich, 
Sullivan, Turnbull, Bureau, Russia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 32. Legislator Benelli, resolution providing for the raising of taxes required by the Orange County budget for general government purposes, social services district purposes, Orange County sewer district number one purposes, Orange County small watershed protection district number one for Cromline Creek purposes, and Beaver Dam Lake district purposes, and levying taxes pursuant to section 360 of the county law, section 900 of the real property tax law, and section 4.08 of the Orange County Charter and Administrative Code. Discussion? Roll call. Bonnison? Yes. Ikes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Canarino, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Hadouk, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 33. Legislator Berkman, resolution adopting the 2016 capital program as amended, pursuant to the Orange County Charter, section 4.07. Legislator Benton and the legis legislator yeah. Berkman. Just minus some minor confusion. I think I was supposed to have my name on both of these. Okay. You, well, Adam, no problem. Jeff, did you want to come off? Or did you? I certainly want to come off. I just uh, kind of I actually done. don't even remember. Yeah, I'm, I think I voted against, I don't know how many, over a dozen capital budgets because of the process of how it's not really a two-party system with the capital forming the capital budget. And we can talk about that like we have in other years. This year, uh, I'm making an exception, and I'm going to vote for it, uh, because uh, one very important project in there, the Heritage Trail, for those that haven't heard. <laughs> so, so uh, but as much as I, uh, <laughs> as much as I'm, as much as I'm proud to support my community and my section of the county, that doesn't mean I want to be the the, the prime sponsor, so please uh, put Matt, put Matt Big Mouth on there for me. <laughs> Matt Big Mouth and Lee Matt. Okay. Yeah, Jim Poole, sex sponsor. Yes, Legislator Nagastakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we have the capital plan for 216 that we're about uh, to adopt. For those that are new, you probably haven't heard me say this over and over and over and over, that the only way you're going to get your problem financially down is if you either cut um, waste, wasteful spending, or stop spending uh, on new projects that are not absolutely necessary. Um, people have told us that we're in financial, we were in financial ruin this year, and next year we're doing great, and I don't believe either one of those. I don't think we were in financial ruin this year, and I don't think we're doing great next year. I think we're just about the same every year. As a matter of fact, since I've come to the legislature, I think we need 20 to 20, 20 to 30 million of reserves to balance the budget about 25 million a year on average. And I think that's exactly where we are. This capital plan has more spending in it than any capital plan going back to 2009 that I looked at. As a matter of fact, just, and again, this is just for the record, nothing else. If you go to page 29, you can see that uh, in this upcoming budget, 2016, we have devoted 32 million of debt service. That means paying back principal and interest. But because of everything in this plan, and I get it, not everything in this plan is going to be adopted, but most everything will be. And I know over the years, six years, I voted on maybe over 50 items where I voted no. But every single one of them passed. We, we just had an example earlier today where three or four legislators vote no. Occasionally you'll have three or four legislators vote no to something, but it always passes. So if everything in here passes and gets adopted, if you just look at page 29, just in two years, by 2018, that 32 million of debt service goes up to 52 million, 20 million increase. Three years from now, in 2019, it goes up to 62 million, 30 million dollar increase. So, unless you cut 30 million out of your budget of spending, or unless somehow tax revenue, sales tax revenue skyrockets by the 30 million, or your property values go back to pre-recession uh, levels of 2008, we are going to have the financial crisis in two or three years that everyone's been saying we have right now. Thank you. Okay, I'd just like to remind everyone that the capital plan is just that. It's a plan. It's not carved in stone. Any legislator can, can come to me, the chair of physical, the chair of ways and means, and say that you'd like something added when we do our planning in 
July and August for the capital plan. It's just a plan. Everything that we adopt or we bond out of that plan has to go through the statutory committees, respectively, and has to come to the floor. So everybody gets a bite at the apple, whether you want to or not. It's a plan. It's kind of a wish list. It's a, you know, what we want to do in the future. Am I not right, Neil? Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Roll call. Oh, wait. It's more than a wish list. It's the infrastructure for most of the county that we need to maintain, uh, update, uh, new construction, whatever. Uh, obviously, you know, it's more than just a wish list. There's definitely necessities in this capital plan. I stand every. corrected. It's a needs list more than anything else, and we prioritize that needs list each and every year through the committee process and through the regular floor process. Okay, roll call. Oh, Eric. Just one uh, thing in addition, um, I served on the Capital Plan Committee for the first time this year. Um, the original plan that was set before us had about an increase of $11 million. That was pared down to about $4 million by the committee during our deliberations. So uh, we tried to do our best to keep that in line. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to, uh, through our further deliberations uh, as, uh, as a legislature on individual items and, and then again next year. Okay, roll call. Lassa? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Baggione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk, Riskevich, Sullivan, Turnbull, Vera, Brescia. 20 ayes, 1 no. Okay, number 34. Legislator Berkman, resolution making appropriation to point out Cooperative Extension Association of Orange County pursuant to subdivision 8 of section 224 of the county law. Second. Discussion? All Democrats, all Republicans, I know Paul wants to be on it, and Barry. All Republicans, and Michael? I don't want to be on this one? Okay. All right. <laughs> Horses are involved with agriculture too. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnastakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Riskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay. 35 through 62 it is, correct? Yes. We're going to vote on collectively. What is 62? It's not on the. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's on the revised. Town of Monroe, unpaid water charges. Right, Town of Monroe. Unpaid water charges, Town of Monroe. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Canarino? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Riskevich? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, just to remind everyone that our next meeting is 10 o'clock on the 17th, and the luncheon is immediately following. Um, good deal at Kelly Jeans. Get your money into the office. We didn't go through general services for that, but we got a good deal. So, okay, motion to adjourn. Yes, Minority Leader Lucas. Probably would have got it better. Um, I'm wearing uh, my American flag tie today because I had the privilege of going to a Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. And I just want to remind everybody that this Monday is December 7th, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Uh, we are supposed to be uh, flying our flags at half-mast, and we are having a huge ceremony down on the Newburgh waterfront. You're all invited. It starts with refreshments at 10. The ceremony is from 11 to 12 at Blue Point Restaurant. Thank you, Chris. Oh, happy Hanukkah. We have to wish that now, right? December 6th. Thank you. It's eight presents, Mr. Chairman. Eight presents, okay. <laughs> how, many, how many candles? <laughs> okay. Bye.